The Holly Landmars 300 Pro is a super compact wireless HDMI transmitter and receiver. In this video, I wanna tell you about my favorite things about this device. Before we get started, a quick disclosure. Hollyland did send this to me to review, but everything in this video is my own opinion and I'm not being paid for the review. Hollyland does not get any input into what I say here and they don't get to review this video first. All right, so let's start with a quick summary of the features and see what this can do. The Mars 300 Pro is a transmitter and receiver pair for wirelessly sending an HDMI video feed. You can also use it to monitor the video on a smartphone. The transmitter and receiver can be powered with a battery or via USB-C. The transmitter has an HDMI input as well as an HDMI pass-through output. And the receiver has two HDMI outputs. They connect to each other over a five gigahertz connection, which is the same frequency range as Wi-Fi, so it doesn't require a license to use. They claim the range is 300 feet, but we're gonna put that to the test later on in this video. On the side is a little OLED display and control wheel for changing some settings and keeping an eye on the status. You can use this to send an HDMI signal farther than you can run an HDMI cable, but it also supports monitoring the video from a smartphone. If you connect your phone to the device's Wi-Fi hotspot, you can load up the app and see the video from the transmitter. It actually supports connecting up to three devices, and the app has a bunch of cool features like viewing a waveform, focus peaking, and even loading in LUTs. So that's a quick overview of the features, but that's enough of that. You can go read up on the rest of the features on the website or look at other videos. Let's move on to some tests. There's a few things that I want to test with this to get a sense of how it compares to some of the other cheaper and also more expensive devices. Let's start with a distance test. Now, one thing to keep in mind with distance ratings on these devices is they usually list the range assuming a direct line of sight. So this is rated for 300 feet, but you can only expect to get that if you have a direct line of sight between the transmitter and the receiver. As soon as you're trying to go through walls, it's going to drop the range significantly. And that is true for any wireless technology. Think of it as shining a flashlight through a frosted piece of glass. Without anything in between the flashlight and your eye, you can see a crisp point of light that's really far away. But if you put a frosted piece of glass in the middle, then first of all, it's gonna be a lot dimmer, but it will also be hard to tell the difference between that light and another flashlight close to it. All right, so I decided to see just how far I could get a signal from this by taking it to a place where I can actually see farther than 300 feet line of sight. Remember the bridge I was in front of during the smoke apocalypse live stream? Well, I went back there after the air cleared up because from the place I was sitting, I figured I could get a direct line of sight up onto the bridge and walk across the bridge and see how far I could get. So I put a camera and the transmitter on a tripod down where I was sitting and then I rigged up the receiver and a small monitor on my bike so I could see the picture that was being sent from the camera while I was riding. And I actually got pretty far and then the picture dropped out when I was around here. Now it occurred to me later that I don't actually have a way to measure how far this actually is. I don't have a tape measure that long and my laser measure doesn't actually work that far either. I can kind of measure it on a map, but that's not super accurate. So I guess this wasn't the best test after all, but still this looks pretty far away probably farther than I would ever need to actually use this in practice. So let's move on to some of the other tests that will hopefully be a little more successful. I wanna measure the latency between the transmitter and the receiver. On the website, it lists 0.08 seconds minimum latency, which at 30 frames per second is around two to three frames. So I'm gonna test this in more or less ideal conditions with the transmitter and receiver in the same room in my studio here. So for this test, I'm gonna play back my video encoder stress test clip on the Blackmagic HyperDeck. And that of course has a little monitor where you can see it. So I'll connect that to the transmitter and then I'll run a cable from the transmitter's HDMI pass-through to a monitor here. And that way we can see the signal that it has at the transmitter. And then wirelessly, I will send it to the receiver and have a monitor plugged into the receiver. And then we can see the delay on the receiver. So when I play back this clip, we should be able to compare a still shot showing the frame counter at the bottom and see how much of a delay is added at each part of a signal chain. Okay, so here's the clip playing at 30 frames per second. This hyperdeck is the player, which is what we're comparing to. Now, this first monitor shows the output of the pass-through of the transmitter. Now, keep in mind, there are a few places where a delay could be added. If we compare the visual output of the hyperdeck to the monitor, that means the delay is being added either at the HDMI out of the hyperdeck compared to what it's showing on the screen or in the transmitter or in the monitor itself. But since we're using the same monitor to test both the transmitter and the receiver, we can discount the delay of the monitor, which means now we're only looking at two possible sources on the transmitter end. Now on the right is the monitor of the receiver. 
Now it's hard to see the delay when the clip is moving, but if you pause this video or if I take a still photo, you'll see a freeze frame showing the frame counter and then you can count how many off it is. So I'm gonna take a photo with my camera right now. And just keep in mind, if you're taking a photo of this yourself, make sure your shutter speed is at least as high as the frame rate, probably a lot more. So now as I look back at this photo, I can see the delay. There's about one to two frames between what the hyperdeck shows on the screen and the monitor showing the pass through. But I did test this out earlier with the Hyperdeck plugged in directly to the monitor, and there was about one frame there. So it looks like the pass-through adds only up to a frame. And then the difference between the transmitter and the receiver is about three to four frames. And that's basically what they advertise on the tin, which is not bad at all. While we've got this test clip loaded in, let's use it to see how the image quality comes in on the receiver. I very carefully engineered these little clips to push the limits of different video encoders in different ways. Some of these are gonna be hard for you to see in this video because you're looking at a video recording from a camera, which has then gone through a video editor and then up to YouTube. So there's a whole bunch of compression along the way, but I can at least describe what I'm seeing here. There are two of these that are showing some artifacts. The color gradients do show a little bit of banding. So you'll see that if you look really close, there's a bit of banding in these gradients and they're no longer smooth. It's pretty subtle though. And then the other one is this little one pixel grid that changes every couple of seconds. It shifts over by a pixel. From a distance, it looks like just a gray blob, but it's actually black and white one pixel offset. And that one I designed because it's very rare that encoders will represent individual pixels accurately. And sure enough, if you look at it, when it shifts over by a pixel, you can see some artifacts there because it isn't sending every pixel one by one. It is compressing the video to make it through wirelessly. But everything else in here is very sharp. The lines are very crisp, the colors are very accurate, and those are really the only artifacts that I can see in this image. And again, this is a stress test clip meant to push the limits and find where the encoder breaks down. These artifacts aren't really something I'll be worried about in the real world. By the way, if you wanna use these graphics to test your own devices out, I am selling these clips on my website. I'll leave a link to them in the description below. I spent quite a while making these animations to test various parts of video compression algorithms. Each of these little blocks tests a different thing and can be used to see how different encoders and devices add delay or add artifacts in the video. You can download these clips in 1080 or 4K at 24, 25, 30, 50, or 60 frames per second. So take a look at this link if you're interested. And remember, every purchase helps out this channel. Now let's talk about some of my favorite features of the Mars 300 Pro that are unique to this model in particular. I really like that this has built-in antennas. Most of the other models have the little external antennas that you screw on. Now, external antennas are usually better for getting a stronger signal, but frankly, I haven't had any trouble with the built-in ones. The reason I like the built-in antennas is because it makes the devices a lot smaller and portable, and it's so much quicker to set up and also easier to pack into a bag. So the other unique thing about this model is that it can be powered via USB-C instead of 12 volts DC. And the reason I like this so much is it means I can use all of my existing phone batteries with this and it's easier to power on small rigs. I used this in the Yolo Box live stream and it was perfect to be able to use a USB battery to power both the camera as well as the Hollyland transmitter. It's also easier to power from USB on my desk where I've already got a bunch of USB power instead of having to run another 12 volt power brick. So that's a few of the things that I particularly like about the Mars 300 Pro. Overall, it is a great upgrade to the 300 and I really don't have anything bad to say about it. I really like the form factor. It feels very solid and it works great. I've been using it every week during my live streams. It's the one powering my wireless monitor in the main camera angle. My only complaint about this is that the HDMI jacks are a little bit finicky. For some reason, you have to get the cable lined up perfectly straight. Sometimes you feel like it's plugged in, but it's actually not all the way in and you have to line it up straight in order to push it in all the way. Most other HDMI ports I've used don't have that problem, so I'm not really sure what they did differently here. But that's really my only complaint with this thing. Overall, it is a fantastic device. Well, that about wraps it up for this video. Thanks again to Hollyland for sending this to me. It has been a great addition to my kit. And thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.